Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, Joe Cusick is back with us. He's a portfolio specialist over at Kelmos. Investments we're going to take a look at is a storm on the horizon. Will Q4 of 19 look like 2018? Clearly, this is the time of year for us to be discussing it, and it seems like a very different picture now than it was back then. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you look at the numbers that are coming across, extremely positive, but here's the thing. The catalyst last year in 2018 was the Fed. That had been taken off the table this year with three cuts. So we don't have the Fed. Um, but at the end of the day, you're looking at globally, is it as bad as we thought? Europe, yes, still struggling, but we're starting to see it firming up. As a matter of fact, we're starting to see interest rate considerations there. Is that policy really going to stand? And then finally, you know, the trade talks. That continues in ebb and flows, but I think the last time we talked, Joe, you know, we were talking phase one. You know, we thought that was going to get done in Chile. Well, of course, that should have been a prognostication that that meeting wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Right? There was unrest in Chile, but the conversations are still going on. And, you know, we had an ADP number today that was positive uh, in the sense that we still had growth in the product services uh, sectors, but we still saw some weakness, though in more of the, the, the manufacturing and specifically in the oil services area. There was some drawdown there. That was some concern. And yes, it was a lot lower than what we had in the previous month of 135, uh, 135,000 jobs at 67,000 this month. But I still think that we're moving the needle in the positive uh, path. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what the job summer looks like on December 6th, because if it does follow suit with what ADP showed, that makes you question, are the is the uncertainty around trade deals. And now that we're fighting it on three fronts now in the EU and South America, is that putting some pause on employment? It will, but here's the thing. I want to put a little bit of a, a seed of thought in that. Watch the wage numbers. I think that's going to be a more important tell than the employment numbers. Uh, you know, yes, the, the ADP didn't have the government, you know, hiring and firings, so that's going to influence that. So I, I take all of this with a grain of salt as far as the employment. You know, unemployment's still at 3.6%. Mm -hmm. I want to see wage growth. And we saw that pause last week. We didn't see the growth, you know, year to date, yes, it's up three tenths of a percent. But we're seeing that start to slow down. If we don't see wage growth, then you got to start thinking, is the consumer now going to get under pressure? And we'll see. And that was the bright spot. Let's go to our first chart here. Global central banks, we're going to go sure. more into the numbers here in terms of them taking more of a dovish stance. Yeah. And, you know, as you saw going into 2018, you saw universally global central banks raising rates. That's indicated over to the right October, July, October, and January, pretty much so every central bank out there was raising rates. We were walking in last year, if we were talking at the same time, you and I would be saying, well, we're pricing in at least two to three uh, more uh, upticks uh, by the Fed, uh, specifically, and then probably with global rates. Well, that pivoted as soon as we got into January. Now you've seen from since January of 2019 to current date, we've seen every central bank in the world, they've been cutting rates. And as a matter of fact, Europe, with the negative interest rates. But here's what's interesting. You're starting to see another pivot going into the end of this year, and this is what differentiates 2018 and 2019. They're starting to reassess whether or not, specifically Europe, negative interest rates are really going to drive the determining, you know, drive what they wanted to, which was people getting out and investing and not just parking money into fixed income assets, you know, safety. Uh, it looks like it may be picking up a little bit. We've seen some interesting numbers coming out of Germany. You know, we're seeing some interesting numbers coming out of Italy, but the central banks are starting to pivot. Once we start to see that number get less negative, um, that far right of the chart, then, you know, as far as global rates, then I think we could start seeing that the potential discussion on maybe inflation, mm -hmm. God forbid that happens right. and whatnot. And, you know, are we going to start getting interest rate hikes? All right, let's move along to our next chart here. We're going to break it down further more. Four areas of potential storm clouds and how it's different from Q4 of this year versus last year. Yeah, you know, I mean, here, let's look. Fourth quarter of uh, 2018, reversal in expectations for progress. Well, in fourth quarter of 2019, all we've had is progress, 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 right? We have phase one that looks like it could potentially be, you know, this morning we did have news out that it could potentially be moving forward, even though it w yesterday they were saying it wouldn't even happen until the election. Um, so you're starting to see progress towards talk on the tariffs with China, uh, also with Europe as well. And that's been very volatile, and I think that's the linchpin. Mm -hmm. um, you see, you know, U.S. and other central banks were increasing interest rates time. As we had noted on the previous chart, they're not now. Um, here's the other thing that I want to talk about. In 2019, we're talking about impeachment. That's all that's on the news right now, except for when we talk, right? In 2018, it was concerns about the Mueller report. Well, we saw what the results were the Mueller report. The, you know, 
Obviously, everyone pulled back. There was no formal impeachment process started. Now we have a formal impeachment process started. And today, if I look at the markets, you wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know, right? So I think what we're seeing is, is that people are focusing on what are the results, both domestically here in the United States, uh, as far as economic and globally. Is Europe as bad as it is? Are they going to go into a deeper recession? Is China, is, are, are they going to be able to continue to stimuli the, co the, the economy there so that they can continue to push forward? And then ultimately, are we going to get closer to not only a trade agreement with China, but are we going to get closer to maybe the end of the year, which I think has more promise of uh, tr the trade agreements with Canada and Mexico? That could be a big driver going into next year as well. All right, let's move along to my last slide, my favorite one. Market uh -huh. timing doesn't work, and I'm sure you could say that over and over again, Absolutely. and you learned a lot of lessons along the way. Yeah, and you know, we've talked about this. I mean, it's really hard to stay vested, especially when you see days like yesterday where market pulls down 1-2%, especially after, you know, 25% returns. The key is, is that if you miss out, in other words, you try to time getting out, you're going to miss out of the 50 best days, right? Let's say I pulled out my money last year in December, stayed out of the market, and then tried to time getting back in. You're going to miss potentially the 50 best days. That's a 5.9% uh, miss on pot uh, potential um, returns. You know, the key is, Jill, hedging. We've talked about this before. Um, at Calamos, we use hedge equity strategies. We use market neutral strategies so that we can weather the storm. We're going to smooth out our, our, our risk uh, by utilizing selling calls, buying puts, and a combination of those both so that when we look at this chart, we're going to be able to maximize the up days and mitigate and soften the down days so that we're going to be able to capture those best days throughout the year without having to liquidate our positions. I think this chart says yeah. it all. You know, especially you start to buy as things are going up, but as soon as you get a big down day like yesterday and you get that drop, that's when people start to pull out as well, which does not help that number over there. Absolutely, and you have, if you have that natural insurance policy and it's paid for, um, and you know, again, that's what we do as professionals mm -hmm. at Calamos, that allows you to stay in the markets, weather the storm, and then when you look at it over the course of time, you know, one year, three year, and five year uh, perspective, you're going to have really great risk-adjusted returns, and that's the key part. All right, Joe, thanks so much, as always, for joining us at MarketSite. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.